Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Google Sign-In to add Google Sign-In to your Expo React Native app. I've done this a few times before, but um, this is something that has been changing reasonably regularly and has been quite a popular video, so I thought I'd redo it again. So I'm going to start off by adding my bundle identifier to my iOS section of my app.json. This is just going to be useful when I go and create my OAuth client credentials inside um, the Google Developer Console. Um, and so it will be able to recognize that this is my app, along with the um, additional info I'll supply to it, which I'll get when I create it in the Google Developer Console. It's also going to need this additional item in the info plist. And this is just some um, URLs that will be supplied by Google. I'm going to leave this empty for now because I don't have it yet, but I'll go and fill that in in a minute once I've gone and uh, set up inside the Google Developer Console. I'm also adding this Google Sign-In as a plugin. So basically it's a config plugin, which means that I'll need to build my app using um, the Expo build CLI and then I can go ahead and run it as like a dev build. It'll install a standalone application on my um, emulator or simulator and I can run it using um, this Expo dev client package which I'll install soon. So I'm going to want to create some credentials. I've already got some here. This is kind of one that I've used before um, as my sort of default project for Google Auth. I'm going to go ahead and delete these after so you won't be able to use the keys. You shouldn't like share things like this um, generally. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and delete those after so you can't use mine. Um, I think there are some validations in place to make sure you're not using the incorrect one. Um, for example, um, I provided my bundle identifier and also um, for Android, you have to provide like um, the SHA um, results, so. So this is the iOS URL scheme that I was talking about, and that's going to need to go inside my app.json file, inside here. So now I've got that complete. This is my default app and it's just pre-standard um, from the template. I'm going to go and add to this to add the Google sign-in functionality. I'm going to configure my um, build file, which is going to be basically um, my configuration for any builds that I do. So it's the EAS JSON there. If I click on it, I'm going to go ahead and add simulator true to the IELTS section because I want to run on the simulator. I'm going to go ahead and create my other OAuth client IDs that I require. So I'm doing one for Android now. Actually, first I'm going to go ahead and build my um, iOS application because it's going to take a little while. Um, and so, yeah, it's best to just get it running so it can happen in the background. I'll kick off Android the same way. Um, that dash P is basically the platform and I'm running it for Android and I'm specifying that I want to build for the profile development, which is specified in my eas.json config file. I want to get my credentials for JSON so that I can go ahead and get that OAuth client ID and we're going to take that SHA1 fingerprint.
So I've grabbed that SHA-1 fingerprint and I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the correct, correct um, field in the um, Google Developer Console. I'm also going to go ahead and get my Android package name, which I've made match my iOS one. I'm just going to re rename this one so I know what it is. Can't verify ownership yet because it's not on the Google Play Store yet. And I can copy that client ID across. But I'll do that in a minute. When I looked at the documentation, it suggested creating um, a web application one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll just pass this configuration through um, to the Google sign in um, config plugin. I've got a button there because I'm going to use that to um, trigger my log out. I'm also going to import a couple of things. I'm going to import Google sign in, which I'm going to use to set up my sign in. And I'm also going to import Google sign in button, which is basically a component that is like a familiar button that would look familiar to people who use Google to sign in. So um, it'll just have that expected user feel. It'll look more professional. It makes people feel more comfortable that they're actually, you're actually using Google to sign in and not just doing something just dodgy in the background. Of course, you should never enter your passport password into random text fields um, so it will actually pop up a window and prompt you in the new normal Google way. So I'm going to create this function now um, for configure Google sign in. It's going to call this configure function and pass a couple of options. So I'm passing the web client ID. I'm going to pass an Android client ID. This one's not in the documentation. I'd seen it when I looked up a few things and I was having a few issues with the Android client ID. So I've included it anyway, because it's not going to have any harm. And I'm also including the iOS client ID. So I'm just going to copy and paste each of these client IDs now. Finally, the IS client ID. I'm going to want to configure that Google sign in when the um, application loads up. So I'm using this use effect um, function to basically call it when the um, app opens and the components mounted. I'm also going to have a sign in function, which I've defined there, but I'll fill in in a minute. And that's going to be called when I click on my Google sign in button, which is a component provided by the Google sign in um, NPM package and also has like some sizes and um, yeah, like dark mode, light mode. And when I press it, I want to call that sign in function that I haven't filled in yet. You 
get started, I'm just going to console log that I pressed the sign in button. That's just going to indicate back to me that this is all hooked up correctly. Just checking on my uh, simulator build. It's still in progress, so I'm going to go head back and add some more to my code. So when a user clicks the sign in button, I'm going to want to try and sign them in. I'm going to want to catch any errors and display it also. Um, the reason I want to be able to do this is just to help the user resolve any issues they're having. Uh, so I'm going to have a state variable here called error and a set of function for that error state variable. Whenever an error happens, it's going set error is going to be called and it's going to trigger the re-render of the UI, which will re-render the error message on screen as an error message will be passed to it. There are a couple of steps. It's going to just um, call this Google sign in dot has play services. And then I'm going to get the user info back. Um, and I'm going to do that by calling this Google sign in dot sign in. Those are um, asynchronous, so I've got their long running things potentially, which means I've got an await there, which is why I've made my sign in function um, async. I'm also going to add an additional state variable for the user info. And so when I get user info back, I can set it and I can display like relevant user info on the screen. Um, I could also use it to sort of hold on to any access tokens that I have. Um, and that could be used for further API calls if I've included um, scope requests to get like access to certain Google APIs. So now my um, iOS simulator build is ready. So I'm just going to go ahead and download and show you guys what I have. Just going to drag that file across and it's going to install. And now I can start running my app using this um, Expo Dev Client. So I go Expo Start Dash Dash Dev Client, and that will basically allow me to run that inside that standalone app. I just need to say that I want to open it on iOS, and it's going to go ahead and open it inside that app. That basically allows you to make changes that would require typically you to eject. I noticed I actually made a typo here and sign in should not be capitalized. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all my references to sign in. And it shall be fixed now. Cool. So now you can see I've got a sign in button. I'm going to make this text display my error if I have any. I'm also going to show my user info. So let's go ahead and run that now. So I click sign in and it opens up. I'll enter in my username and password if I hadn't already. And it's going to show me like the access token and all the additional user info. It's overflowing the screen. So I actually want to reduce this down just to make it look a little bit better. Um, inside this user info, object there is the actual user so i'll just do, go dot user and it'll get me more specific user like more like profile information so you can see photo name and all that
Now when I've got user info, it means that there's someone logged in and so it wouldn't, wouldn't be relevant to click that sign in button anymore. Instead, I might want to try logging out. So I'm going to create a custom logout button for this. So I'm just giving it the title logout and on press, I'll call a function called logout, which I'll define in a minute. that logout doesn't make any um, asynchronous calls, so I don't need to call make it asynchronous. I'm going to set the user info to be undefined when the user logs out. And I'm also going to go ahead and revoke access. And I'm going to go and log the user out. That's just going to log the user out nicely if they don't want um, their access inside the app anymore. If there is not user info, then I do want to display that sign in button. So I'm just going to move it inside this ternary operator here, which will check for user info and display the appropriate button accordingly. So I've clicked log out. And you can see that it says cannot read property use of undefined and that's because user info is now undefined. Um, so what I need to do here is I'm just going to basically check whether um, user info is undefined and I'll only display that um, text if it is defined. Cool, so you can see the sign-in button now, and that would all work correctly. Now I'm over on Android, I'm going to go ahead and download my, um, my build for my emulator. Now Android is something that I've shown in the past and often has issues on the emulator in particular that I've noticed. Um, it just seems generally a bit flaker, flaky, I don't know if it's just my emulator or Maybe it's better on physical devices, or maybe it actually is a bit flaky. Um, so I'm going to show you it um, as it was and as it is working currently, which is not working. So I'm going to click sign in and it's going to hang. Um, but I did previously have it working. Um, it just seemed to start working after a while earlier when I was using it um, and testing it. And... So yeah, this is how it would work if um, if it wasn't flaky for whatever reason. Um, if anyone knows why it's been a bit flaky and whether there's any settings or anything, um, please do let me know um, so I can help people out and update um, um, people who might be watching this. But yeah, it does work. It's just flaky. Um, this is the code that would make it work if it were to work. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to hear from anyone who has it on, in production. Um, surely it works because a lot of people are using the package. So it was having some issues because I had some alerts in this previous test code that I had. I've removed that now and you can see that it works. So that's how it should look. Um, it may not work for you or it may work for you. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. All my code will be available on GitHub. Please like and subscribe for more content.